Hi, it's Katie Jarvis with Managing the Mess. In this video, I'm gonna talk all about transitions, switching from one class to another, one grade level to the next. Just for reference, I'm an elementary art teacher and I have an hour long class. I see the upper grades in the morning and I see the younger kids in the afternoon. When I'm seeing my upper grades, I have five minutes of transition time between those classes. In the afternoon, I have zero minutes between my classes. Um, I'm very aware that some of you out there have even more challenges than I do with your schedule. So hopefully I can share some tips and tricks that will help to make your life a little bit easier and help you feel less stressed. One of my favorite resources for dealing with the transitions are these rainbow drawers. I did get these at Michael's a while back with a coupon and I recommend this version. I've seen it also on Amazon and I will link it in the description down below. Another version of these with kind of a metal rack and sliding rainbow drawers is a little bit more flimsy and I don't think it would hold up. The reason that I got two is, is that as I use a resource, I will store it in here and I will do this throughout the quarter. That way, if a student is absent, if one of my classes is a few weeks behind, I still have access to all those resources that I may need. So when a class comes in, I can easily just open this up and I know I've got my fifth grade planning sheet there ready to go. This is something that I use daily and definitely keeps me organized. As you come into my art room, I have drawers labeled by grade level. As I open this one up, you'll see that I have my current materials in here ready to go. So this is where I would keep my table folders with all the students' planning sheets from the previous class. This is where I would keep my reference materials I'll be using for my lesson that day. I like to put these in bins for the students. This way it's a little bit easier for them to pass out, but it's got a spot there for them to put them back when we are cleaning up. This is where I would keep any paper that we will be using for the day already cut and ready to go. And I'm staging things out right here because this is the spot that I'm gonna have my students go to. As soon as I'm done giving directions on the carpet for my lesson, I still have all my students quiet and I'm assigning those helper jobs and I'm referring to the materials that are sitting right here. Have your students help you with transitions. If I have a minute, I will lay out materials for my students and I will set out my job tag so that students can help me to pass these materials out. So my tool job today is gonna to be to pass out these reference sheets. I know that I'm gonna need two pencil passers, so I'm setting these out as well. If you're interested in learning more about these job tags and how I use them in my classroom, I have an entire video all about that. If I have zero minutes of transition uh, and I'm setting things out, I would just narrate it just like I'm doing for you. So I tell my first graders, oh, today we're gonna need two paper passers. And I would select those students, have them come over as I'm pulling the paper out of the drawer and have them begin to pass those out while I pull out the rest of the materials and assign the rest of my jobs. You can always have students line up a minute or two early and play a game. My favorite is one, two, three, freeze. And all the details of the game are in my video about lining up. And as my students are playing this game, I can be setting up for the next class. If it's an upper grade, I can even pull a couple kids out of the line and assign them a job to help pass things out for my next class. It's a great strategy to take some stress off of your plate. As art teachers, we need to stay organized. And the best thing you can do for yourself is create little centers. So this is my glazing cart. I simply just wheel this out whenever we're doing glazing and instantly I have all my supplies ready to go. If I'm doing clay projects, I love to put them on a cart because as soon as that class finishes, I simply just shove these into the closet and that way the next class can't accidentally touch them. If I'm doing something like needles um, and sewing, I would store these things just like this in my closet so I can pull out these materials, pull up them down on the counter and use them as needed. There's nothing special I need to set up once I'm getting these materials out. Same with my paper. If one of my classes is doing collage, I can go into my closet, quickly pull this out, set this down on the floor, 
and it's set up for my students to go. So as much as possible, if you can just keep things in your room, if you've got the space, if you've got that storage closet, just use it to stage things so that you can easily pull materials in and out. Another strategy, especially if you are tight on space is, I like to use this little curtain. I had used it during distance learning and it got a new life. And sometimes I will just block off materials with this so students cannot use them. I'll put things behind there that are ready for the next class that I don't want students to touch. A big part about being good at these transitions is being organized. So it's a good thing you found this channel managing the mess, but also about being prepared. So I like to have my lesson plans done ahead of time. And I like to really think about those transitions and put the things in my planning into my to-do list. For my to-do list, I use Google Keep. I really like this because it will go across to my phone, to my iPad, to my Apple Watch. My list is always with me. So if I remember something that I need to do, I can simply add it in. How I organize mine is I have a morning and an afternoon school list. And I have a checklist, so there's things that I just do every single day, check them off, and then simply uncheck them the next day. So those are things like setting up my Google Slides, pulling out my gradebook, and the morning clearing off the drying rack. Um, but I'm cross-referencing that with my plans. So on this particular Monday that I'm getting ready for, I can see that I have five classes. In the morning, I've got two classes in a row that are painting. So on my checklist, I wanna write down in the afternoon that I need to set out my paintbrushes because that's kind of a rough transition to send kids over and have them open up a cabinet and dig out particular paintbrushes that I want them to use. I can see in the afternoon, I got another class that's painting and then two classes in a row that are doing clay. So I want to make a note to myself to have um, covered the tables because this day is literally looking like it's just going to be mess on top of mess on top of mess. So I'm going to cover the tables with paper. But also, since I'm doing clay, I know that the day before or that morning, I'm going to write that down, that I want to um, have some carts ready to put that clay on as soon as the clay is finished. I also want to set up a plan of when during my day am I going to be cutting that clay so that it is ready to go for students. Um, doing this ahead of time and having these lists has really helped me to better use my morning time and have my time after school, but really effectively use any planning time that I have. I sure hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. I make videos just like this for art teachers like you every single week. Don't forget to subscribe.